Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 124. You send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I'll do my best to answer them. Got a lot of emails this week, so let's see how many we can get through. This one's called Sun and Moon. Hi, Mark. I hope this email finds you well. I heard it from the news that the moon is supposed to be the biggest it will be until 2025. My mom is who actually heard it. I am wondering if that means the winter moon because I looked at the sun and moon clock that David Weiss made and it's interesting that the sun and moon are not on the exact same path. The moon is in front of the equator closer to North America and the sun is behind the equator. But would I be correct in thinking that we see the moon even bigger in the summer as it becomes more north of the equator? Maybe that would be a harvest moon? I wonder what makes this winter moon the biggest until 2025. Would you have a clue? Are you looking forward to the question everything convention in Southern California? I wish I could go. Will you or anyone be putting any of the talks on YouTube? Will YouTube allow it? Thank you for always being so faithful to answer my emails. I wish you well and pray for you often. Best regards, Teresa. Uh, <clears throat> okay, first thing, uh, the winter moon and the atmospheric lensing and however the moon... I mean, I think atmospheric lensing is probably the biggest cause for why the moon is big. It's huge on the horizon. We see it as it's just getting up in the sky and also perspective because you're you're seeing the, the, the horizon line below and it does look massive. In fact, the, the one that I saw down in Los Angeles recently was just amazing. Of course, it snowed down there, which is a little strange for Southern California at the end of February. And yeah, I really did enjoy the uh, the conference, the Question Everything uh, convention. It was fun. It was really fun. Uh, you know, I got to see uh, Robbie Davidson and Matt Long and Patricia Steer and um, Paul on the Plane and and all these other great people. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I hope they do more and more stuff down there. So, um, and well, yeah, and he'll, they'll be putting it up on YouTube. No question. They filmed everything in great detail from multiple camera angles. So it'll it'll be up on YouTube soon enough. This one's called, and forgive me, because I've been talking for the last four or five days, pretty much nonstop. So my voice is a little croakier than normal, but we'll we'll get through it. This one's called Awesome. Mark, thanks for the link. Shirt ordered. Thanks again. That's from Mike. Yep. Uh, he was ordering a Flat Earth shirt. You guys want There's tons of people that are selling Flat Earth t-shirts, uh, but the, 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 the bigger one is like, join the Flat Earth Army. That's the, I, I love the Flat Earth Army shirts. And of course there's I am Mark Sargent shirt, which I don't necessarily encourage people to wear unless you're part of the inner circle and you know exactly what it means. If you know what I am Mark Sargent means, then all being, by all means, wear it. Uh, moving on, that was from Lawrence. This one's called Vacuum. Mark, is there any way to get a NASA spacesuit or an item that NASA claims is used in space that has pressure and gas contained in it? Put it in a vacuum and watch what happens. Here's a video of a balloon in vacuum. God bless your great work, Mark. And that's from Cannabis Bud. I don't think that's a real name. Uh, no, I, I not yet. We're still working on a NASA suit. But yeah, it, you know, you want to have fun, uh, again, take a NASA suit, just empty and put it in a freaking vacuum chamber and see what it does. I mean, I, I still want to be in it, of course. And also like to clarify, because Robbie Davidson was, was really good about bringing this up. He's like, you know, in your clue, you said you want somebody else to be in the in the chamber with you. Yes, I'd, I'd love somebody from the science community that would hand me the suit to also have the confidence to put the suit uh, you know, or, or another suit on himself and stand with me in the in the uh, vacuum chamber while they while they cranked it cranked it up uh so yeah we're, we're working on that but yeah if you guys want to have some fun by all means type in anything fill in the blank in a vacuum chamber and watch all the objects in a vacuum chamber and see what happens because it's one of our greatest talking points which is pressure needs a container plain and simple pressure needs a container everything from a can of hairspray to a basketball move on on this one's called is there lo others like us mark i'm fascinated with the outside of the dome like what could really be on the other side yeah me too do you think there are, is other flat earth experiments yes like he's talking like ours yes absolutely uh what if this test or whatever we are on isn't just happening to us but others we never met or seen yep absolutely 
that's when dimensions come into play. Should, or say we could get out. I know I went over this in my first email, but say there is another civilization out there in the same boat as us. Would that truly explain UFOs and other worldly beings? Yeah, sure, they're older versions of us. How could there be UFOs? Maybe the government is keeping the space program secure and making UFOs up to keep the cover up. Yeah, also good. Or are they interdimensional travelers trying to find more answers on the outside? Yeah, all, all great questions uh, and possibilities. Would there actually be others out there? How do you feel on this? Please let me know. I think I'm going nuts thinking about this and my girlfriend probably thinks I'm a wacko. And P.S. My real name is Jessen. And if you mess up while saying it, I understand. Well, I won't mess it up if you kind of tell me the phonetic uh, pronunciation because I've never seen that, that name. J-E-S-C-E-N. It's kind of like a funny way of saying Jason. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, like J-E-Y-S-C-E, and that'd be a cool way to spell Jason. That'd be awesome. Uh, so yeah, all, the, all those things are great. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I've always said that the, old, that the, the remnants of the civilizations that we have with us now are just the older versions of us previous versions this is not a one-off uh, i don't think we're the first person people to, to rent this apartment and if you're going to make one of these why not make a lot because then you can have civilizations in all sorts of different stages moving on this one's called globe baby jumper picture <laughs> what Globe baby jumper picture hello mark here you go seeing this item in a walmart in oh baby Dude, it, it, look, I don't mind if you don't proofread everything, but proofread the title. Uh, saw this item in a Walmart in Florida, South Carolina about a week ago, uh, February 11th. Had to stop and take this picture. Take care, David Z. And the image is of, oh, it's a six meg image, uh, is of a, um, and I already downloaded it. The, uh, one of those things that babies sit in, I don't know, because I've never had kids. Uh, where, you know, they have a, like a mobile and, and it's like a little toddler thing that they can wheel around in. But right in the center of that darn thing, right in front of them is a globe, a plastic globe built into it. I thought that was a little obvious. This one's called Bad Video. Mark, I watched the video behind the curve. You're going to see a lot more of these, by the way. Uh, just so you guys know, if, if you haven't heard already, uh, Behind the Curve, you know, once it was released on Netflix a week ago, uh, just started trending, and there's so many people watching it. So it, we, we've been getting a lot more press. I mean, I've got, I, I came back from Los Angeles, and there's a, a crunch load of, of, of interviews and comments and emails like this. So I watched the video behind the curve with an open mind. I was hoping to gain some information. Oh, and there's going to be some troll emails, by the way, uh, about why the earth is flat. But all I got from the video, here we go, was a propaganda style informational video and nothing that convinced me that it's even remotely possible the earth is flat. If you want to convince people like me on the fence about your theory the earth is flat, then please produce a non-biased video that shows both sides of the argument. Right now, my impression about flat earth is a bunch of people with no reputable proof on their claim. And that's from Glenn Knight. From packbell.net. Uh, yeah. Um, first off, if you... If that's what you got from behind the curve, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive because most flat earthers think that it was extremely uh, non-propaganda, you know, because again, you had a psychologist coming after us and several scientists and an astronaut, uh, a lot of video clips against us. No way was that a propaganda piece. Uh, did it plant a seed, a seed in a lot of people's heads? Yep. Yep, it did. But at the same time, uh, no. And, and this, so my response to that guy, I actually wrote him back and I, I sent him the subject matter, ex, matter expert testimony list from my YouTube channel. There's a playlist there called subject matter. Ex it's all the, the subject matter experts and there's uh, like 30 of them. And each interview is two hours long. So I said, hey, you, you know, you might want to listen to all these guys. I don't know, from all branches of the armed forces and pilots and engineers and air traffic controllers and just about every everybody has to do with transportation so and he never wrote back go figure this one's called your theory mark for many reasons i believe it is possible we live in such a world 
Look at the fake moon landings, for instance. I believe that the Truman Show was true up until the manufactured ending. Yeah, but you kind of had to have that ending because otherwise the movie doesn't get made. I mean, technically, the Truman Show would have, uh, the, the movie would have never been made because they would have had the production um, locked down to where they, he never would have caught on. Never, ever, ever would have caught. They wouldn't have had the production mistakes that they that they had there. But but they had to do that. You know, they had to like deliberately let them slip. Uh, it just makes sense, even though I don't know all the answers, my sci or scientific jargon. And that's from Steve. Thank you, Steve. This one's called Hi. Literally called Hi. Hey, Mark. Uh, sorry that I missed your call on Sunday. I was busy shredding powder up at the local ski mountain with my daughter. I have my daughter on a week on week off schedule, so when I and and my Comcast, come on, stop popping. Go, you don't have to. It doesn't matter. Sorry, computers still bug me sometimes. That there's lots of little things that should have been fixed in 30 years, and some of the old stuff keeps happening. Uh, she's actually my entire focus, soaking up the good times now. I'm sure that in no time she will rather be spending her free time with her friends. We listened to your voicemail in the car, because uh, I do leave people voicemails from time to time, on the way down from the hill, and she instantly recognized your voice from your videos, and she got really excited that you phoned in. She has been flat since she was 10, and your videos have been instrumental in helping both of us find our path, so thanks again. I really appreciate your call, and I'll try to reach out to you this coming weekend. I'm racing in a snowboard event on Saturday, but maybe on Sunday I'll try and see what you're up to. That's from Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. I'm glad my voicemail um, inspired you in some way. This one's called... Here are the Coast to Coast MP3 files. I was so happy that somebody sent me this. This is from Frank, so thank you, Frank. I, as you guys know, uh, I had a two terabyte hard drive, which was, wasn't was even a year old. Now, granted, it was a magnetic drive. It wasn't solid state, but that's what came with the Aurora in this case. Just die on me. I mean, it just ground to a freaking halt, and I had a data recovery service try to grab something off it, and they grabbed, like, almost nothing. And uh, so I lost my coast-to-coast -coast interviews because those are the inter only interviews I can't put on a cloud uh, or, or, you know, on a public cloud anyway. And so somebody sent them to me, So Frank in this case. So he, he sent me the Coast to Coast interviews. So if you guys want to listen to them, because as you know, I cannot put them on YouTube because they're literally, I think they're like the only person that the group that made me sign something that said I could not put the audio files on YouTube. And it's like, all right. This one's called, Thought You'd Like This, Mark. Mark, my name's Justin, uh, and I do carpenter construction work for a living. Well, we started a remodel on an older house as I was looking at the job and what needed to be done. I noticed this wallpaper in a bathroom. The wallpaper had several sayings all over it. Lo and behold, it was clear as day. The earth is flat, class of 1491. Yeah, that was nice. It was on that wallpaper in a bathroom. Sure enough, that was really cool. So thank you, Justin, for sending that. This one's called Meteor. Hi, Mark. This is the second time I have had this happen. A green flash coming down very close to me. And I'm a truck driver in the UK. The last one was at about 11 on the 9th of February in Oxford, United Kingdom. It was green, not very big. And as it got closer, it started to catch fire. I was on the M40 motorway, so I couldn't stop. I'm a flat earther, but this just made me wonder. Kind regards, Adam. Don't don't let it make you wonder. Look, meteors and comets are just part of the the thing, you know, the system. Uh, it, that that came up. Oh my god! Like the first week, four years ago, I was like, "What? How about meteors?" And uh, it was Jonathan from Jersey that came up with the best answer for me, anyway, which was, "Yeah, you know what? It's just like throwing rocks into an aquarium. You know, putting a physical object in in into the system would be very very easy. And of course, you'd really want to make sure because you're talking about a lot of kinetic energy." You do not want that thing to hit the ground next to any population centers. Again, look up on YouTube and find, see how many videos you can you can find of one meteors flying in the sky. Uh, you know, big it was not just shooting stars, but actually you know slow motion type meteors. And second, the, the way more difficult to find is uh, meteors that have landed. So, but thank you for that, Adam. And don't worry, stay flat. You're doing fine. This one's called, thanks for chatting today. Hey, Mark, Gary McGuire here. All the best. Thanks for taking my call. 
It's been pretty frustrating for me for a few years since I accepted the Flat Earth model. So I've been observing the first rule of Flat Club. I should tell you I am 66 and retired. I didn't, you didn't have to tell me that, but that's nice. Recently on a plane trip from Vancouver to Mexico, I had what I thought was a revelation, however simple it may be. Like I said during our quick call, connecting horizons from an aeroplane, the passenger on the left side of the plane looks out his window and sees the horizon. The pilot looks on the front and sees the horizon. The passenger on the right side looks out his window and sees the horizon. Pondering these views, I had to surmise connecting them with a circular curved line. There would have to be. It seemed a revelation to me at the time. Anyway, just to let you know, I loved how you summed up Flat Earth Clues with hopeful views of our creation. Yeah, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Truly wonderful and amazing things have happened to me in my life that have proved we're more than skin and bones. Not sure where this life is heading, but hoping you have a good one. If you ever hate computers sometimes, if you are ever in the mood for a good story uh, on one of my main revelations, there's been a few. I'd love to let you in on some. Cheers, man. That's from Gary. Thank you, Gary. This one's called New Video. Mark, this was fun to make. Wish I could see you in LA. Have fun. Chris Pontius. Uh, yeah, Chris Pontius made me a video about his van and his new models. And so I put it on my YouTube channel. All you have to do is type in Chris Pontius Flat Earth. Or go to flatearthmodels.com and you'll see all the great stuff that he makes. He was also in the documentary Behind the Curve. In fact, he was the only one that came out unscathed. Mostly because he didn't say a lot. He was doing, you know, all these cool building montages with his hands. So that was really fun. This one's called August Picard. Mark, good day. I trust all is well. I pray you do get this email. Am I to understand you have an issue of popular science which has the documentation of August Picard's balloon trip. I'm wondering if I may get copies of the pages which document this. I have had no luck in trying to acquire it. I have a National Geographic issue which details Admiral Byrd's adventure to what is called the Antarctic. I will scan and send copies whether you oblige me or not. You reach a larger audience. Be blessed. That's from Anne Penso, P-E-N-S-O. Thank you, Anne. And no, I, I don't have anything on the uh, Picard stuff, but it's on there. It's everything, Most of the stuff is digitized online. This one's called Watch Joe Rogan. YouTube has tried to censor Flat Earth videos on YouTube by Marty Mar Escobar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Joe Rogan is also commenting because, you know, when the, one of the largest corporations in the world says that they are going to recommend less of these three topics. One, snake oil that, you know, snake oil that promises to cure illnesses. Uh, two, 9-11 conspiracies. And three, Flat Earth there we are. Biggest three problems that YouTube has right now, and we are one of them. So go for go for YouTube. This one's called Hello from Soviet Block. Oh, good. I get to do this. Hello, Mark. I actually came to a similar conclusion as a call-in fellow on TFR tonight that the sun and the moon are a part of the dome structure itself rather than objects directly under plus minus some details. That was one of the topics I was trying to call about since it been circling in my head for over 48 hours now and apparently I'm thinking about it even in my sleep. On that note, I would appreciate if you shoot me an email when you're back from the conference so I could set up a call and finally talk it out and maybe just maybe break this loop in my head best regards oh and then the whole thing was screwed up because it's a woman you see i can't do a female russian accent irene oh it's a i, I, I totally screwed that it's irene the woman that calls in with a russian accent and then the whole lower section is um in russian moving on this one's called no subject mark why haven't you entered the bible as proof that the earth is flat. I, I, I've made like several clues on this. Uh, the book of Genesis, although I did not quote chapter and verse, to be fair. Uh, the book of Genesis st states that the earth is fixed and the heavens reach down and borders the edges of the earth. The other thing is that the physics of water, that it all, will always settle to center. The majority of the earth is covered by water. It is impossible for the seas not to settle. 
and how could the seas stay in place as the earth travels at such a high speed of rotation what do you think about the ocean currents that travel in the opposite direction of earth's rotation yeah good one the ones that flow in the same direction don't travel at the same rate but as a believer in god the bible is my proof and theories are not facts and schools teach theories which is their agenda science is used to disprove the possibility of religion to weave out god in the future generations to the point of a folk tale fictional character and will have no resistance in turning their theories into facts this has been going on for centuries governments use science to discover religion because religion is bigger than the government to achieve their agenda they must over time prune each generation one step further away from religion and its teachings that's from joseph hmm? good stuff and hey you know i've said many times that the the bible is a flat earth book uh, there is literally and i know some people don't like me saying this but it's true uh, there's literally only one verse in the Bible that even remotely goes against flat earth, and that is Isaiah 40, 22. He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Circle is not globe. It is not ball. It is not sphere. Circle is circle. Dinner plate is circular. A dining room table sometimes is circular, and so on and so on. A circular can also be two-dimensional flat. It doesn't have to be a sphere, which is why we try to specify the other three. This one's called Booking Inquiry. Hi, Mark. I'm reaching out to you on behalf of Turn That Off Podcast, a show that examines various subcultures and popular culture at large. We're actually located near you in Tacoma, Washington. Would absolutely love to interview you about your work. Would you be interested in appearing? For context, the current reach is about 10,000 people. So on and so on. Ratios. Uh, you can find out more about us at turnoffthatpod.com. It's also on social media. Thank you, Sarah Gray. Thank you. And yeah, I said yes. I say yes to everything, pretty much. So, and you'll be hearing more of those as we go along. This one's called, I try not to get political, but Democrats support the globe. I find that Republicans support Flat Earth more than Democrats. Hmm. I'm voting Uncle Donnie Trump in 2020. Flat Earth changed my life for the better. Thank you, Mark. That's from the Cisco. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I don't get into politics at all because I've never voted in my life because I think your vote is pretty much wasted, at least at the federal level. I mean, it may not be at local and state levels, but at the federal level, it's a complete waste. Uh, because, you know, when you get into... It's kind of like the difference between high... You, you, wow, I just thought of this just now. It's kind of the difference between high school ball and college ball and the pros. Uh, high school, you know, for the most part, kids don't get really paid for anything. And so the games are pretty honest. You know, it's based on talent. And then when you get to college, there there is some money gets funneled in by the recruiters and, and alumni. But that's mostly, uh, it's, it's different. You're trying to get them out of the system and into the pros. And when they get into the pros, the game is completely rigged. Absolutely rigged. Uh, there's just way too much money. And that, I've tried to say this many times. If there's too much money in any given thing, you're going to have corruption. Plain and simple. And uh, so, yeah, as far as me voting, sorry, long way, get all the way back here. Dem difference between Democrats and Republicans, uh, I, I don't really care. Uh, you know, the, we haven't had a, a, a president that has had any real muscle flexing power until uh, since uh, eisenhower and that was only because he was a five-star general because he was tied to the military which had a lot of power and he had a lot of uh, generals that were still loyal to him which reminds me a lot of the roman days so anyway that being said uh 2020 make make the world great again flat earth vote me president because <clears throat> that'll happen uh this is called the first ever silver coin issued by plow that celebrates sell celebrates the flat earth good morning mr sergeant we're happy to hear that uh as soon as you're it, we'll talk about it on feohp please warn me have a nice trip and thanks again uh yeah I should, i've got to remember to, it's from power coin power coin has made a silver coin with flat earth on it and uh i'm gonna mention it on patricia's show on wednesday if i get a chance this one's called News Around the World About Flat Earth, studied by an assistant professor from communication and media from Texas University. Hi, Mark. Do you know about this study from an assistant professor? Her name is Ashley Landrum at Texas Tech. And fetalk.pdf. It's becoming famous and circulated all over the world. Winky Face, uh, BBC News, The Guardian. 
Oh, right. Study believed. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was the Texas Tech University study. Ashley, uh, interesting that you basically blames YouTube for the rise in number of flat earthers. Uh, and that's uh, sent to me by a guy named Rui. R-U-I. Ru Rui? Rui? I'll call him Rui. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, that's not a shock to anybody. I mean, YouTube is now the biggest television network in the world, period. There, there is no one even close. I mean, have millions and millions and millions of videos, more content that you could you could go through in a thousand lifetimes on YouTube right now. Now, granted, a lot of it's not very good, uh, but you know, the cream always always rises to the top, and so on and so on. Uh, so when somebody says, "Oh, it's YouTube's fault," it's like, well, I mean, come on, you don't. You did a study on this. It doesn't take a genius to find out. Look, wherever the biggest social media outlet is, that's where we're going. And since Google, one of the largest corporations in the world, owns YouTube, well, then it's kind of Google's fault. Moving on. This one's called New Moon Found in Our System. Scientists unveil Hippocamp floating around Neptune. And that's from the independent.co.uk. You know, sometimes I really like British journalism more than I like American journalism. They just, they take risks. They put it out there. Uh, so you guys can look that up if you get a chance. Uh, there's another supposedly new moon flying around there. Just another space beat story. Thank you for that, Adam, out in the UK. This one's called Dan from the Overwatch Project. Great insights here. Please share. That was from Todd. And what did he send me? He sent me a YouTube video that says what? Why are we here? A Gnostic take on the point of life with Dan of Overwatch Project. Hey, great and all. I don't see Flat Earth in the title, though, which means I was probably going to miss it in the first place. So somebody watch that thing and tell me if there's Flat Earth in it. This one's called TV Interview Request. Mark Sargent. Mark, we look forward to seeing you. And that was from Kelly Stewart at The Fallen State. And yeah, I did an interview down there with uh, and um, Patricia Steer and uh, Robbie Davidson uh, were there with me. They were out in the audience and we did an interview that was down in Los Angeles. Fun. So hopefully that'll be on air. I, I won't be able to put it on my channel anytime soon. It's just another one of the interviews that I will not be able to reproduce. This one's called If Only I Knew. Okay. Hi, Mark. Quick hello from Liverpool in the UK. It's I've been into Flat Earth now for about six to seven months. I would honestly warn people not to research into this topic as it is a lonely existence that you cannot come back from. I have this week started a new job because the director in my previous job ridiculed me and publicly shown disrespect for me in front of others, implying I was stupid and how could anyone take me seriously in my managerial managerial role? Hmm. My director was and is the most intelligent man I know, although a sociopath and not very kind. I believe like anyone, he would embrace Flat Earth if only he researched it. But I'm actually glad to have less in common with him as possible. My family, friends, and partner all dismiss me when I mention Flat Earth. So that now I just keep it to myself and listen to you regularly and am forever watching new YouTube releases on the moon, NASA, Flat Earth, the news, etc. People ask me why it is so important anyway. It makes no difference to your life, but I do believe it does. I've never been religious, but I believe in energy and electrical frequency, etc. And even if the Big Bang was real, then there was a God who created that. I just feel like knowing the truth does unlock a part of your brain that gives you insight, wakens you up, hmm, interesting, gives you a different, happier energy. If only you had friends with the same belief, it would be great. Anyway, a couple of questions. I believe we are in a snow globe with a dome with water on the outside. We have so much water beneath us that remains unexplored. Could the waters of the sky meet? with those underneath us and therefore we are basically in a huge bubble in water consisting of land and air yeah yeah i totally like that or do you think we could be in a double dome with water trapped in the second layer also good yeah those are good things 
As we can't scientifically measure curvature, but science assumes we are in a sphere, if accurate, far out one here, could we be placed on the inside of a globe rather than the outside? Uh, no. No, no, no. That, that would be like a concave Earth and the optics. You'd be able to spot that in two seconds. I mean, it, look up something called the Dyson Sphere uh, and, and the interior of a Dyson Sphere. That's what it would look like. We do not see that. Uh, I believe that the moon is so much closer and I'm still trying to work out what it is, but yin and yang spring to mind, hot sun, cold moon. If the moon is on the inside of the dome, do you think NASA may have went there? No, I don't. Uh, as what would be stopping them? The Van Allen belt could be just a hoax. One thought up after the 60s. Haha. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, also, what do you think of the pyramids? Again, remember the Van Allen belt, by the way, was announced in 1959 by a NASA employee named Van Allen. Also, what do you think of the pyramids, their locations for sourcing energy? I have been to the pyramids, uh, at least the, the Giza ones, not the Bosnian ones or any of the other smaller ones. And I, all I can tell you is whatever whoever built that, it was not us. The technology to build that now in 2019 is would be an engineering marvel and would cost billions just billions and billions and billions of dollars. And again, I don't even know if we have the tech. And we, and we still wouldn't be able to do it in the speed that they say it was done in. They say it was done in 30 years. And I, there's no way. Uh, last one, California uh, wildfires. Selective wild wildfires, DEW, and target exploding smart energy meters. Uh, I refuse to have one fitted for that reason mainly. See how easy it is to now believe nothing and no one. Anyway, keep up the good work. If you have this on your show, can you message me the YouTube question and answers number so I can listen to your response? Also, can I have a copy of your guide? Do you, you do not have an audio version also? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. First off, yes. Um, you can have a copy of my guide, Empty Shelves, The Survival Guide. And there is an audio version of this, of the Empty Shelves. It's actually part of my Strange World series. All you have to do is go to my playlist for Strange Worlds. And it's like, in, I think in the first 10 episodes, I read uh, most of, except for, you know, some of the little technical things, The Survival Guide. But uh, yes, I will put this in my to-do file and tell her what episode I am going to answer this on, which is 124. And this one, speaking of which, this one's called Survival Guide. Hey, there, Mark. I contacted you the other day. Rebecca from Georgia, thank you for your video link. I watched it. I was very perplexed by a lot, obviously, but mostly by the ending. What the heck? Can you please explain? Seemed to contradict everything. Uh, and that was, yeah, the Jaren laser experiment. And yeah, uh, it, it, hard to explain other than it was all done in editing. Jaron didn't botch the experiment. He didn't ruin the experiment. Uh, was it set up badly? Uh, the problem with Jaron's stuff was he didn't do a, a rehearsal before they actually had it rolling. You, you, that's uh, Anyone that's going to go on camera, whatever experiment you're thinking of doing, just don't think, oh, I'm just going to wing it. We'll do it live. No, no, no. Do the experiment on your own so you know what to, to expect and make sure you can i mean the first experiment jaron did he couldn't even get the beam to focus and they had to come back they had to fly back to san francisco a second time and then he still got the angle wrong so no it was just the way it was edited so don't worry about it also can i please get the survival guide i was just listening to your email q <clears throat> a and heard you mention that i would appreciate also do you know of a specifically critical credible person on youtube channel that explains fe in spanish uh yes iru from the globebusters that would be the person my husband is from mexico and although i'm f well i th is iru spanish does he speak spanish or does he speak um uh one of the languages down in south america uh, i forgot and although i'm fluent i want to send him some direct videos to check things out for himself thanks again thank you um, yeah, there's a, there are channels out there in Spanish, but I don't know them. So I don't know who's good and who's not. Hopefully they can just type in flat earth into Spanish. And again, you can do this with any language, take flat earth, convert it to whatever language you want, Spanish, German, Italian, French, who, who, who knows, and then put it right back into a search engine and it'll pop up a, a whole bunch of results. This one's called rabbit hole. 
Mark, the Flat Earth is child's play compared to the stuff I've discovered. Stay tuned. And that's from Bible Liberation Movement. Okay, first off, you guys know me, no cliffhangers. Don't send me emails like this. Don't don't say, I've got something to tell you. And he didn't even say right back, nor did he sign his name. I mean, yeah, there's Bible Liberation Movement, but that's just up in the little header up there. So what am I supposed to do with this? Great. You know something fantastic. It's bigger than Flat Earth. Love to hear it. I'd love to know why I don't know about it already. This one's called, Guess What's Trending Now on Netflix? Yep, there it is. There's the screenshot. Uh, it, so on under Netflix, under Trending Now, in the Conspiracy section, uh, yep, behind the curve. And they use a different... They use the bubble version of the uh, the thumbnail, which I thought the domed version of the thumbnail, rather than just the movie poster. So how fun is that? Yeah, very very cool. Trending on Netflix. I'll just send that to a few people, just uh, in case you're wondering. This one's called Flat Earth. Wait, what? <laughs> it's funny. Mark, I contacted you about a year ago to discuss a worldwide science experiment that I coordinated. This experiment was to collect data from across the world to help better understand the shape of the Earth. I invited you to come with me to Mexico. You did? So you could participate in the experiment to make sure everything was above table. It seems that you decided not to respond to my emails after hearing the details of the experiment. I don't know if that's true. Because I would have gone to Mexico. You had to send me a ticket, but I would have gone. Well, finally, I had time to produce a presentation to share the data to the, with the public. I would like to invite you and others from your side of the discussion. Oh, because you're not a flat earther? Oh, to join me in the presentation. I provide a link to the registration page for the community education course set up for the presentation. I'm hoping to get people from both sides there so it can be a good discussion. If you are unable to make it, would you be able to forward this link to people in the Rochester, Minnesota area that might be interested in coming? I know there are Flat Earth believers in Rochester because I have met them. Appreciate any help you can uh, provide. P.S. I just watched Behind the Curve last night and got to see a lot of you and Patricia Steer. I enjoyed the movie. Thanks. Paul Larson. Oh, he's a planetarium director. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like us very much, I don't think. That's right, Paul. See if you can stop us. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. This one's called Great Video on the Flat Earth. Mark, what, what has your research shown about the other planets and why they appear to be rotating and what, we are actually, what we're actually seeing with our telescopes? In my mind, we might be seeing the bottom of other similar containment environments. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, the bigger question is, why would you even care if they were rotating? Remember, and I keep pushing this to people. It's like, look, if you're in a building, if you're in a structure and all that's up in the sky is just lights then who cares if the lights are rotating they're just rotating lights at that point it, it, people say well it, again it's the it's the conditioning it's the reinforcement you are told since you were six years old then you're on a rotating spinning ball and then you you're shown it's like okay those lights in the sky those are other versions of us up there they're rotating spinning balls and you're just believing it you gotta break out Gotta, gotta, gotta. People say, you know, look at all those things up there. It's, it's space, planets and stars and galaxies. I say, you see planets and stars and galaxies. I just see pretty little lights because no one's been to those things. This one's called Flat Earth Believer, but going deeper. Eyes are open wide. Hi, Mark. Dude. Seriously, he starts out with dude. Dude, I'm down with Flat Earth and my research has led me to way more intel oh boy i need help to spread my new conspiracy i believe that the illuminati is a phrase taken from those who have access to discrete documents that are referred to as illuminated manuscripts check into that but my time is spent mainly on researching the coat of arms all of which are quite bluntly related to zero point dimensionless aircrafts all the terms used in heraldry can be researched and related to electrical terms if you don't believe try it for yourself Look into terms of heraldry and tell me that you cannot find an electrical meaning behind any of these terms, like a shield, field, stator, or electromagnetic field. I have attached a few pictures as examples. These are just emblems of countries. I believe they are almost diagrams on how to create huge electrical power for an anti-gravity craft. 
If you notice, these show a station on the outside with an armature creating an electromagnetic motor. And that's from Ross. Thank you, Ross. That's great. This one's called Curious from Sweden. Hi, Mark. I just watched the documentary on Netflix and became a bit interested in the movement in which you are a member. I have a few questions to which I would like to hear your view or maybe some general thoughts on. I don't know if you read all your mail or I don't know if you read all your mail or answer any questions like this, but what the heck? Question one, the sun only is a light that produces in the sky by some governmental group or something like it. Where does the heat come from? Where does the energy to provide Earth with everything we know come from? If the sun is only a light, don't we have to throw away all the major sciences? Yes, you do. Every science almost derives information from the sun being an energy source. Oh, it generates energy. No different than this light bulb next to me right here. Generates en energy. Does this light bulb heat my room? Partially. In fact, not much by comparison to all the other heating elements, which are down where? Not in the light bulb over there, but on the ground. The heating vents, for example. Or if I was, if this place was filled with water, there would be, a, you know, like a hot tub. What heats a hot tub? The sun? Nope. The light bulb above the hot tub. No. Okay. Every science almost plants growing and creating oxygen, the heat of the sun's rays and so on. Solar panels would be a waste of energy. No, 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 no. Solar panels absorb energy. No question. I'm, I'm not saying that solar panels don't pick up the energy. I'm just saying the sun isn't the exclusive energy system. To boil it down, what creates this energy that drives that drives the light in the sky? Oh, oh, you mean how does the sun get its power if it's not a thermonuclear explosion? Uh, electromagnetic transfer. Again, how does they, um, you know, again, the light bulb is such a great simple example, which is, okay, where does the light bulb get its power from? Well, an electrical source that's out, that's away from the light bulb. Yeah. It's not hard. We've been doing it for a hundred years. Sorry. Question two, why do we see the tops of the mountains from afar and not the whole mountain? Sometimes you can see the top of mountains at the bottom. There's a big city, but from far enough away, we only see the mountain top. Oh boy. Okay. First off, atmospheric lensing. Second, uh, distance and perspective. Uh, third, the thickness of the atmosphere. Again, remember what you were looking in, you threw right now when you're looking at the, your telephone or telephone, <laughs> your iPhone or your laptop or whatever is only 99% transparent and it gets less and less and less as that you're, you're, you're breathing in, you're existing in a thin version of water. If water is H2O, what you're, what you're breathing in right now is N4O. It's four parts nitrogen. Most of the people in this world don't even know that. It's like, oh, we're breathing in oxygen. It's like, no, 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 you're not. You're barely breathing in any oxygen, like 20%. In fact, it's less than 20%. You're breathing in mostly nitrogen. We don't tell you, we even tell people that. And so it's a thin version of water. You can only see so far. It's why you can't see Japan from California and you can't see Europe from New York. Question three, how do compasses work? They work the same as they do on the globe. North Pole's at the center, magnetic north. Now the South Pole, there is no magnetic south. And you can watch all sorts of videos on that. Uh, not only have I had subject matter experts tell me that, but there was a video that came out just last week. A guy in Antarctica that got that question. It's like, hey, how's a compass work in Antarctica? Doesn't. You'd think South Pole should dominate. It's a North Pole, South Pole, dual magnetic system. Doesn't happen. Uh, do they point to the center of the flatter sur surface? Yes, they do. What happens when you fly south? Nothing. It keeps going north. I looked at the map provided the documentary and thought the test of it is simple. Just fly south from where you live down to South and South America with the compass in hand. Keep going south and see where you end up. Surely a pilot can't trick you if you have a compass on you. No, he doesn't have to. Does not have to. Seriously. I, I, they're good questions, but they're old questions. I wish you and your, I know it's not yours per se, movement all the best. I'm just not quite there yet, but who knows? Maybe someday. Regards, um, Hallmar from Sweden. Thanks, Hallmar. This one's called, Are You Living on Whidbey? Dude, what the heck? I saw your documentary on Netflix. Uh, your mom has an age today in 23 years. I live in Freeland. Uh, yeah, I did I hear about Sean and Archie? Yep, forever since I saw you. That's from Misty. Uh, someone that uh, uh, lived on the island with me years and years and years ago. 
And yeah, I haven't seen her in a long time. Call me. We'll catch up. Cool. This one's called Hey Mark. I'm Phil from Washington, D.C. I hope all is well with you and your family. I was wondering if there's going to be a Flat Earth convention this year. <laughs> I just got back from one. Literally just got back from one. I really want to attend. That's from Philip. And uh, I probably should write him. And Did I already write him back? No, I haven't. So I probably should tell him that there is there are multiple conventions this year. And uh, what's the next one going to be? Well, the next one's in New Zealand's. Doubt if he's going to that. There might be one in North Carolina. I'm still waiting to hear from these guys. That's supposed to be in May. And then there's uh, two in the fall. One in London and one in Amsterdam. And then, of course, the big one in Dallas for the big U.S. conference. So, yeah, there's all sorts of conferences that are happening this year. This one's called NASA Drivers Pulled on the Moon Landing. That's from usatoday.com. NASA Moon Landing. Real Daytona. Enjoy. You know what? I'm going to click on that real fast. Was the moon landing real? 11 NASCAR drivers weigh in by Michelle Martinelli. She's written other stuff in the conspiracy world. And how many of them? Let's rattle them off real quick. Uh, Martin Troex Jr. I'm not going to go there too much. Uh, of course, somebody thinks it's a lie now. Jimmy Johnson. Absolutely, we landed on the moon. Joey Logano. Of course, we landed on the moon. Kyle Busch. I don't think we landed on the moon. Okay, there's one out of four. That's not bad. Uh, Chase Elliott, I do believe we went to the moon. B Brad Kl Kelslowski, uh, be he believes. Ryan Blaney, I believe we went to the moon. Blaney, Kurt Busch, I think we went to the moon. Clint Bauer, he's undecided. And it looked like it was like a panel. Carl Larson, sure, but he's not completely convinced. Huh. Yeah, of course, most are going to chime in. Remember, most of these guys have sponsors. You don't want to go against sponsors because as Dana Perino from Fox News said, I believe in the moon because I'm a patriot. Dana, come on. So basically, what she's saying is you should absolutely believe everything that the government tells you. Where did I, when was the last time I heard that? Oh, right. Those guys. Flat Earth Google Hangout. Hi, I was recently watching a Netflix documentary about Flat Earthers and saw your interviews. I visited your YouTube page and I thought I would contact you. I teach Earth Science in Pennsylvania. I was wondering if you might be interested in sharing your point of view via, via Google Hangout or Skype with my students. Sincerely, Diana. You betcha I would. Be happy to talk to any students. And I'm seeing more and more on that. This one's called Flat Earth Tests We Can Accomplish in Seattle. Hey, Mark, my name is Chris Barr, and I am new to the Flat Earth Movement. I just finished watching the Netflix documentary featuring you, and it gave me some great ideas for experiments. The fact that I live in Seattle and you live close as well is perfect. A little background on myself. I'm an MEMS technician. worked on the Washington Nanofabrication Facility in Seattle. I'm very interested in people listening and respecting the views to, of all. I would love to discuss this further with you. Please contact me either by... Email or phone. There's his phone number. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Great ideas for experiments. Maybe. Dear Mark, first, I'm French, so please excuse my English. I don't believe the theory about the flat earth, but it is not the point. Do you already think about sharing your theory over the world in Europe, for example? I mean, come on, Europe and do some conferences. As you know, this old theory of flat earth comes from Europe at the beginning. Yes, I know. Don't you think it'd be interesting to share this idea in France, Italy, Germany? Yes, and that's from Lafont Julien, and he's in uh, Lyon, France. And you bet I'm gonna put that in there and tell him about the conferences that are gonna be in Europe. One, of course, is in London. The other is gonna be in Amsterdam. So it's called Wi-Fi tapping into Tesla's research. Mark, is it possible that the powers that be have tapped into the center of the free energy grid that is all around us? Have they figured out a way to make money on this form from the public? I ponder if there are different frequencies of electrical energy at different heights. Wi-Fi and EMF towers look suspiciously like Tesla's original tower. Any comments or if you know or anyone researching this, please forward to me and thanks, Todd. 
Uh, no, I know nothing about that. Sorry. I, I, I can comment on a lot of things, but I, I have no idea what that is. But I will try to look into it if I get a chance, or at least it'll stick in my head, and if I crosses my desk, maybe I'll grab it. Uh, I just watched Flat Earth Clues. Hello, Mark. I just watched all 22 of your Flat Earth Clues series. I don't know if there's 22, but there might be 22 vids in the play playlist, but it's not all clues. I've spent the last few days checking out all of your claims. After doing so, I must admit, I feel troubled. I'm 42 and fairly intelligent and curious. I have also been through all the conspiracies and ended up here. I would like to know what your personal theory is behind who or what created this and for what ultimate purpose. I understand why this information would be kept from us. Much like a cult leader, if one can convince another, they are not special and subvert the importance of their family and any need for intellectual curiosity. That person could be a very compliant person. Thanks for making such a well-researched and informative flat earth rabbit hole. Take care, Joe. Did he have a question there? Uh, I would like to know what your personal theory is behind who or what created this. Uh, he'll get there. He'll figure that out. There's tons of people that have been covering that, but thank you. This one's called Flat Earth Sun. Mark, I have been curious since moving just north of Fairbanks, Alaska, about the sun rise and set. I moved from San Diego, California, where I noticed changes in the sun rising and setting at different times of the year and the position of the moon rested in different locations at different times of the year. Now I live in an environment where the sun literally rises and sets for months. I haven't seen a model that portrays a flatter sun and moon rotation, anything like what I experience. Can you guide to where I may find or see a model uh, that more it's more in tune with the sun and moon throughout the year? Respectfully, Sandra Guilfoyle. Yeah, uh, Rob Skiba's got it on his channel. And uh, I think David Weiss has got it on his sun and moon app. Uh, there's there's lots of people that do models like that. All you have to do is type in sun and moon, flat earth into YouTube and you'll eventually get to the models. This one's called Question About the Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I recently found out that many people believe the earth is flat. I'm trying to figure it out for myself. I watched some of your stuff on YouTube. I'm having trouble with your curvature thing. You mentioned that the if the earth was round, you wouldn't be able to see things in the distance. I don't see how that makes sense because if the earth is really, really, really big, the curvature wouldn't inhibit it, your view until it was far enough away. For example, if I'm standing in front of a beach looking out the water, I can see the sand in front of me, the waves rushing in, the seaweed floating on the water, the tall rocks peeking up from the water, the island that's about 10 miles away, but not the island that I know is about 20 miles away. There's a point where things are not visible. If the earth were flat, should I be able to see that island too? You talk about how science would have proved you wrong already if you were wrong, but to me, this little thing does prove you wrong. What am I missing? Thanks for your help, Stephanie. Oh, I'm normally I would not write her back because like, okay, obviously she doesn't know what the curvature of the earth is. Curvature is eight inches per mile squared, but we can see objects far, far, far beyond eight inches per mile squared. So I will write her in back and say, look, the curvature is this. I mean, I appreciate, look, she's, she's just going off raw perspective. I see this, I see this, I see this. She's it's in her head, but she doesn't know what mainstream says should be happening. We're the ones, you know, we observe a lot by sight. Mainstream comes in and says, oh yeah, it's eight inches per mile squared. And then we look again, we're going, nah, it's not what we see. We don't see eight, eight inches per mile squared. So, but I will, um, I'll write her back. I'm going to be busy today. Okay. How many do I have left? Uh, 53. Yeah, I can do a few more. This one's called going to take you to task. Hi, Mark. Should see you at Kidderminster. You have never credited me for the Scottish clan reference. I am going to buy you a pint. <laughs> That's from Rob McKenzie. Uh, yeah. What? Come on. The Scot you didn't invent the Scottish clans. And I watched Highlander a long time before I met you. I just connected the references. That's all. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to give you credit for that. Maybe partial credit. I don't know. Whatever. Don't judge me. Moon in Earth's atmosphere are Russia Today News. Dear Mark, please see the links below to an announcement put out by Russia Today News yesterday. I attached another link to back this claim. NASA says the moon is in Earth's atmosphere. This is being shared on other flat Earth channels. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a fake story. Well, it's not a fake story. It's a real story, but it's an it's a rehash of an old story. Of course, there's not breathable atmosphere anywhere, but it's a good space reinforcement story. Uh, but you, but they really can't. They can't run with this one at all because if if the particles per million 
ratio for that was was anywhere even remotely um, close to breathable at let's say a thousand miles out, then the ISS would would melt instantly. Remember, it's traveling at 17,000 miles an hour, if you believe that. But if it's traveling in a vacuum, it doesn't get destroyed. But if you're trying to travel 17,000 miles an hour in um, a particle-rich environment, it would, it would just get wiped out. Wiped out. I mean, there's a reason why our planes, even our, our supersonic planes that are going two, 3,000 miles an hour, are so aerodynamic because you try to reduce the drag from the particles. And yeah, whatever. I hate that story. I'm really glad it's not getting traction. So it's called Idea for Another Experiment. we got to find a good one to end on. Hi, Mark. My name is... Oh, I'm kind of Mac because I don't know how to pronounce that. Yesterday, I watched the movie you guys made about the Flat Earth and the Society. I've been researching the subject of the Flat Earth for many years now. I doubt that. Uh, but I've stopped at some stage and the movie kind of moved something within me again. I think that I went through nearly all the topics regarding it. At this stage, I'm convinced and I don't need any more points. I am Slavic, by the way. So it's in our belief, but there is still one thing that won't let me sleep at night. The last thing that I looked into before my break were balloons. You know how they usually send them to check the horizon. Science tells us that they stop because of the pressure. But what if there is a different reason? People always attach cameras on the sides of balloons. What if one would get attached on the top, showing us what's above? Maybe we could even have a glimpse of the firmament. If it really exists, that is. What if we could also attach a laser? He spells... Huh, okay. Uh, if the laser could reach the firmament, we would be able to see it even if it's transparent. Please let me know what you think about it. For now, all the best to you. Keep on doing a great job. That's from Mac. Um, yeah, the laser, uh, okay, a couple things with lasers, because we've been learning by experience. One, of course, is that a standard commercial grade laser uh, has a beam ratio or a spread problem, meaning it spreads two feet every mile. So at two feet, your beam gets, it's not a point of light anymore. It's a two foot spotlight and then at two miles, it's four feet and so on and so on. Uh, you need a military grade laser with some added focusing and then you got to figure out where to buy that and then it costs a lot of money and yeah if you had a high if you had a big enough laser yeah maybe but it'd have to be huge and then you're talking about a power plant to power it Ugh, logistics pain in the ass devil is in the details all right can we can we end on a fun one how about this? Greetings. Dear Mark, I saw a YouTube post. I'm very interested to know what actually happened in 1956. The higher consciousness level guys discovered heaven or the dome firmament. Can you please shed light on the above? Thanks, Martha. Nope. No idea what you're talking about. Next one. Uh, Israel's first lunar spacecraft. Uh, Beer sheet blasts off analysis. The Jerusalem Post. Jerusalem now has apparently a space program. Uh Good, but I'm not ending on that one because it's too weird. How about this one? Experimental Flat Earth. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I was intrigued by some challenging questions you posed to some German scientists in which they made no response. I sat down and tried to think of an experiment that would definitely demonstrate the flatness of the Earth at the same time derive the height of the sun. Please see the attached document where I propose such an experiment. Best regards, Ray D. Okay, I will end on that one just because we're running out of time anyway. And uh, to clarify, because this is how rumor mills get bent up, which is, no, it wasn't German scientists that asked me. It was um, a German television team that contacted an American scientist, an astrophysicist from Georgetown University. And if you guys want, you can look up on my channel somewhere, the interviews with, I think it was um, EF, EF1, EF1, I think it was the German channel. Uh, and we, we talked about what we were going to do with this guy. And, and uh, yeah, I asked the guy five questions, put it in a video format, sent it to him, and he just folded. So there you go. And then I used it as part of my speech for the Canadian conference, which was in Alberta last year. Okay, that's it. That's all we're going to do. Thanks, guys. Uh, remember, send your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.